Okay, this looks nothing like what I'm seeing in Resolve. It's so bad. So the goal is simple. We want to make sure that our YouTube video looks exactly like what we saw in Resolve. And the solution should be quick, easy, and replicable. Why replicable? You will find out at the end of the video. In full disclosure, whatever I'm sharing here is nothing revolutionary. What this video will do is that it will clear out any doubts that you might have had in the past. The what if game that we all play. What if there is a better setting? This video will eliminate every single option but one, which will guarantee the highest quality export. All right, so the test criteria is broken into four different categories. Detail, grain, resolve UI, and gamma shift. Gamma Shift is specific to only Mac users, and we're going to touch base on that in a little bit. All right, so now we're inside Resolve, and these are the two clips. It is already graded, shot on Sony a7 IV, and then I just added a ton of grain. I'm exaggerating it so we can really see it on YouTube. And then for our project settings, under Color Management, just make sure that your output color space is set to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 since I'm going to be basing my export settings off of this. And if you want to practice along, you can download the footage. The link is in the description below. And speaking of, I just realized there's about 57% of you guys that are not subscribed to the channel. So if you like content like this, it will mean the world to me. If you can subscribe to the channel, smash the like button, hit the bell icon so you could be notified when we drop brand new content. And let's roll the intro. All right, so here's the game plan. We're going to start off by exporting all the versions first, and then we'll start our A-B testing. So I'm going to hop over to our deliver page, and then we're going to go all the way over here. So the first setting that is the most common and is available in pretty much every NLE. So here what I did is that I clicked on this dropdown and I selected 4K. Everything is supposed to be ready to go optimized for YouTube. So let's see how good this is. So I'm just going to call it YouTube uh, preset. Okay, we'll just add that in. All right, so the second setting is going to be YouTube recommended. And if you do a little bit of digging, you're going to come across this page right here. The most important part here is bitrate. And if we go down, we can see it that it's broken into SDR and HDR. And since our footage is SDR, so let's look at this. And what it says is that if it's a 4K footage shot anything from 24 to 30 frames, use these settings. And then if it's high frame rate, use these settings. So for us, the max we can do is 45,000 kilobits per second. Let's go ahead and type that in. So I'm going to go under H.264 preset. We can start off of this and then click on under quality, just hit restrict to. And then we're going to go ahead and just type in 45,000. Okay, we're going to leave everything else as is and we're going to call it YouTube recommended. All right, so this as an image file is also included with the footage. Link is in the description, which is perfect. You can just use that as a reference. Now, if you're lazy like me, what you can do is instead of manually putting in this number every single time, you can click on these three dots and we can do save as new preset and you can just call it YouTube recommended. We recently did a survey. Majority of you, regardless of the skill set, are struggling with shot matching, skin tones, balancing, and working with 8-bit footage. So I created a one hour long free training that covers all of that. Plus, we'll wrap up the training with an extensive Q&A and you'll also get a link to download the practice footage, power grades, and some of my personal LUTs. Link to the training is in the description below. Let's get back to the video. Now, the third version is going to be the most simple, which is H.264 Master. We're not going to mess with anything. We're just going to leave everything as default, and we're going to call it H.264 Default. Moving on to our fourth version. So we saw that YouTube recommends not passing 45,000 kilobits per second. So let's just triple that, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right here. This is our overkill version. So higher the bitrate, better the quality. It makes sense. So why not just give it a try and see what happens. And let's call this one overkill. Now, the fifth version is mostly for Mac users. And what we're going to do is this. I'm going to leave this on auto. We're going to basically use the H.264 master settings. So under tagging for color space, I'm going to select Rec. 709. And then for gamma tag, I'm going to select sRGB instead of Rec. 709. Gamma 2.4. I'm going to name it 264 custom. 
Now, finally, we're gonna go with my used to be favorite method, which is also the most time consuming method. So what you do is you go here, you export a ProRes. So let's just make sure you can just put this back to default. Everything else looks good. We're gonna just go ahead and export ProRes HQ. So let's go ahead and export just this clip right here. So once that ProRes is done, I'm gonna grab this and throw it in a tool called Handbrake. And then in here, I've already created a custom preset and I'll take you through and show you what I'm doing here. So under video, I went ahead and chose constant frame rate. So that way it's not variable because there could be a quality drop when that happens. And then I locked the average bit rate to 45,000, which is what YouTube recommends for 4K. And then I turned on two pass encoding and then I saved it as a preset right here. And then uh, we're gonna start rendering. It renders pretty slow. So this is the most cumbersome of all the different export settings that we went through. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and select all the other ones that we created and just batch render. All right, so once everything is done, we can just go and click on uh, reveal in Finder and let's just call this handbrake. So let's go ahead and look at the file sizes. So our H.264 custom, which was basically default or set to auto is 55.8. And then our default is going to be the same. But you see the difference here? Like how this is so dark, which is not how our resolve looks like in the back. Then that is a very dreaded known problem with resolve and Mac. That's not something that happens when you export something from Final Cut 10 or Premiere Pro. And there is definitely workarounds and that's exactly what we did here. So with the custom tagging, we overcame that. So now if you were to send that to your client and when they watch it, it's gonna look exactly the same as what you saw in Resolve. If I were to play this file in VLC, you're gonna see that it's going to correct it and it's gonna look right. So now if I come out of it, if I open this in QuickTime and if I put it right here and then go between VLC and QuickTime, you can see the difference, right? QuickTime is so much darker, but then VLC is totally fine. And how VLC shows is how we saw it in Resolve and this is exactly how it's gonna look like on YouTube. All right, so Handbrake is actually more efficient. So it dropped the uh, size to 35 megabytes instead of 55. And then the overkill is 74 as expected because we just went all out on that. And then the YouTube preset is only nine megabytes. And then YouTube recommended is 38. So that is somewhere between Handbrake and uh, H.264 default. So now, I'm curious to see how these sizes actually reflect when we do our A-B testing. I have everything queued up. So you got your YouTube preset, YouTube recommended, H.264, default, overkill, custom, and Handbrake. And let's start with the YouTube preset to YouTube recommended. And right away, you can see pretty much majority of the detail is gone. It doesn't even feel like 4K. And more importantly, what happened to the grain? Like, look at what it looks like in Resolve. And now look at what it looks like here. So this is absolutely garbage. And this is the biggest reason why everybody complains about like, why does my YouTube exports look so horrendous? Because we put so much faith in these NLEs that if they have a YouTube preset and they call it, it's YouTube optimized, everything is gonna be perfect, but it actually is absolutely garbage. We even saw the file size, it's only nine megabytes. And I personally feel like this option should not exist, period. Or if it does exist, then they should really address like what is happening here and fix it immediately. Now, when we go to YouTube recommended, just look at the information, look at the grain that came in, look at the detail that came in, all of a sudden this image just bumped up to 4K. Massive difference between these two. Look at right here, especially you can see the difference. And then look at the background, like no grain and then so much grain. YouTube preset is a loser in this case. Now let's compare the YouTube recommended to H.264 default. And right away, I can see more detail with H.264 right here in this area and especially up here. The grain is just better, closer to what I see in Resolve. Overall sharpness throughout the image is way better in the default than recommended. Now. 
H.264 defaults to overkill. Overkill in general does look just a tiny bit sharper, but the grain is worse. So like look at right here, there's almost no grain up top, whereas with H.264 default, there's a lot of grain there. And I'm looking at my image right here and there's tons of grain over there that I can see with default. Whereas with overkill, that's almost gone. You can even see it back there. So overkill will be a loser in this scenario. Look at the H.264 custom to default. Like when we jump back and forth, there is no gamma shift. The gamma shift was only happening in quick time. And now moving on to our handbrake, especially the grain texture is not there compared to our H.264 custom. So in that case, I'm going to have to go with H.264 custom. Now let's look at our GUI. All right. So for this test, I want you to just focus in this area right here. So first of all, when you look at resolve, there's usually grid lines right here, which with the YouTube preset, we can barely see it, right? Like it's all gone. Uh, when I go to YouTube recommended, all of a sudden those lines came back, majority of them, right? Trillion times better than the YouTube preset. Now imagine what it actually does, like how the YouTube preset completely took away the grain, completely stripped off all the grid lines, how else it can be detrimental to your footage. Just think about it. So don't ever use this preset at all. Actually, as a matter of fact, let's make it disappear. Boom, gone. So that one is eliminated. Now let's compare YouTube recommended to H.264 default and keep your eyes right here. So once again, H.264 default has way more information than YouTube recommended. If you start looking at every single square, okay, around, you can pause the video and check it out. So in that case, YouTube recommended is gone. Now moving on from H.264 default to overkill. And what's really insane is that with the amount of bitrate and the file size, you would think that Overkill would absolutely murder H.264 default, but that's not the case. Look at the squares, and I can tell you right now, H.264 is a lot more consistent and has more information. And it's a smaller file size. So in that case, it will almost always win. So Overkill, gone. Moving on to H.264, and H.264 custom, they're identical. There's absolutely no difference. And then going from H.264 custom to handbrake, on paper, handbrake doesn't look bad, but notice something that's happening here with handbrake. So I'm gonna do a playback and just watch what happens. You see all this chatter that's happening? That's not gonna happen here. Let's do it again with H.264 custom and watch. None of that chatter. It's like solid. Now I'm going to go back. I'm going to do a playback now. You see, it's all over. So it's absolutely horrendous. And that is the thumbnail for this video, how I was wrong. It was an eye-opening experience. When I saw this chatter, I'm like, if it's happening here, you know it's going to happen in a lot of other places. So our winner for this test is H.264 Custom. And now I want to give you a million dollar tip because I love you guys so much. I've already gone ahead and I exported the H.264 custom preset for you guys. It is included with the footage, the same link in the description. To bring presets into Resolve is pretty simple. You can click on these three dots and you can just go and hit import preset. When you finish your project and you're exporting the graded version for your client, most of the time they're gonna be assembling everything in your absence. So like the sound comes in and if there is any other changes like or VFX or whatever have you, as a colorist, you're not always available to do the final export, final delivery. So in that case, what you can do is you can shoot a quick video or a PDF and just let them know what they have to do. So you can just click right here. Let's say we go to the same export setting. So let's say it's the YouTube 4K. I can go here and export that preset. So that's what you should do. You should export that preset and then show them in a quick PDF how to import it in their resolve. So all they have to do is just this one step. Click here, import. And then once they have that preset, they can just apply it. Okay. And then that's going to show up right here. So that would be a huge tip because then you can ensure that when they 
make the changes and the video goes online and looks as close as possible to what we saw in Resolve. Now, if you guys like what you saw here, then smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon so you could be notified about future content. I'll see you in the next one. Oh,